In this movie, we're going to discuss how you would be able to cut in and route a file that is too big for a particular plate size. And in this case, we have a, uh, a plate that, let's say, would only cut 35 inches at a time, and we have a part that is 42 inches wide. So uh, what we would want to do here is use the cut to plate function. And if you go here to the preferences menu in the general tab, you'll see the clip tool pass to plate option available. When this is selected, and you do a 2D simulation here, it'll show it to you. You will only output the toolpaths that are within the defined plate. In this way, you can cut one part of the panel, then move the piece, and then cut the other side. Now, uh, in this case, it probably would make more sense than to cut all the way out here uh, to cut a part that would be somewhere, somewhere located between these two pieces. And if I come here and say, uh, edit this toolpath, I'll see that uh, we're about 23.5 here. So we're going to do 23.5. And we'll say move and close this out. So this is going to become our, our cut point. So we're going to come here and make our material now 23.5. All right. So then what we'll do is we'll come here and we'll output this file. Uh, this will be, we'll call this uh, part one. And this is going to output just the left side, 23.5 inches of the part, and, and there's a little bit of extra material here. Now to create the second panel, we would come here and use the move command, and we're going to say minus 23.5, which is the plate thickness, or the plate dimensions there, the plate width. And this will now move it, and we'll cut right on this same part, and we'll be able to cut the second half. And we'll see it's just going to output the second half there. Now you might want to put bridges here since you're going to be having parts that are, are somewhat free already on this side to then come back on this side and, and free them. If you're using a, a part that's already cut and just cutting into it, then you would want to use some kind of registration method of just maybe cutting some dowel holes into the spoil board and using some pins to locate things. If you don't have that kind of a system, it would be an easy thing here to, to set up some and let's uh, let's bring this back to where it's on the other side uh, to set up some some Dow point locations that you can use to move the, the piece and and you know uh, you wouldn't want to try and take up as little space as possible so let's come here and put a um, a 0.25 radius or a half inch circle and let's let's put this at 0.5 by 0.5 now I'm going to come here and uh, I'm going to use a routing offset. Uh, let's do a female here, 0.78. That's how we're going to go about creating our internal component. I will take this one now and do a mirror. We have our midpoint snap turned on. I'm going to make a copy of this. And that's going to create a uh, part on the other side. Now when we're, we're cutting this, we want to locate this so that we are able to move this piece when it's done and put two pop-up pins right in these same locations and then uh, be able to locate the part that way. So the first thing to do would be to put these two holes in, in a little spoil board or a fixture or some type so that you can use them. The next thing to do would be to take your, your part and put it on the table and put two holes in it, these two, and then we're gonna come here and use a uh, multi-copy with one row, two columns, 23.5 spacing and now we have uh, this part here so we can actually come here and take these these four holes let's create a new layer and paste this here so for this particular layer we would want to uh, have a little bit bigger tables uh, a little bit bigger size here so we're gonna say 30 maybe and uh, I would put the material on screen and then cut these four holes. So these become holes that are through the material. Uh, then you want to uh, either, if you've done this before or after, put these two holes onto your spoil board so that you'll have something to line things up. Then I would take two, uh, and by the way, when I cut these out, probably instead of just, just doing a female cut, I would come here and go to the inlay tool and uh, I'll say make it 0.03, which will make it 0.015 on this female cut. 
and that way it'll be just a little bit bigger than the part size and make it a little easier to get the dowels through there but not too much to change your location significantly and you might play around with that a little bit but just use a slightly bigger hole um, and uh, maybe you could even do a 0.01 hole difference then you'll be able to easily line the part up because you will have cut these four holes in the right locations into your original piece and then after you cut this part you'll be able to move move the part the exact 23.5 difference by using your your hole locations to do this so then we're going to come back here and do this again as uh, 23.5 Now we're going to use the move command, come here and say minus 23.5, apply, and now you'd be able to cut your second part and you would have the holes in the locations there in the exact same spot. So uh, this is how you would be able to, uh, to cut a part that's too big for a plate by using the clip to plate method of, of restricting the toolpath and moving the part the necessary distance to cut it. And using this, there's other ways you could register the part by flipping it 180 degrees and always having it off the back of the part. But these are just different different ways to achieve the, the same result of being able to hang the part off the, the, the table.